Do you truly understand the depth of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Let's unpack the underlying facts of this long-standing conflict. It's a story not only of October 7th, but of continuing terror attacks suffered by Israel. And certainly the atrocities of October 7th are forever etched into the minds and memories of every Israeli. Contrast this with the IDF and the Israelis who, despite being constantly under threat, have never resorted to the atrocities done by Hamas on October 7th. When Israel responds to Hamas, an organization known for its brutal terrorism and for using civilians as human shields, some people have characterized that response as genocide. But let's be clear, it's not genocide at all. Israel's response is defensive, a fight for the return of the hostages, to avoid a repetition of October 7th, and for the survival of the State of Israel. IDF soldiers in the West Bank have also been accused of war crimes. But imagine living and working there every day, in constant fear, unsure of who might attack you or your family next. Israel's self-defense becomes a necessity, a matter of survival, not a choice. It is crucial to understand the terrifying reality of the situation before passing judgment or criticizing Israel. Are you aware of what happened when Israel pulled out of Gaza? Gaza was part of Israeli territory but Israel completely withdrew from Gaza in 2005, closing down its settlements there and giving the Palestinians autonomy to run their own affairs. This was a significant gesture of goodwill and peace, but it was met instead with 20 years of terrorism emanating from Gaza against Israel. When the Israeli hostages were taken back to Gaza after the attack of Okot Be'er 7, the Palestinian response was not expressed by concern or outrage, but by large crowds cheering in the streets. This reaction was a chilling reminder of the widespread support of the Palestinian people for Hamas and their hostility towards Israel and the Jews. Israel has nevertheless been harshly criticized for its operations in Gaza since October 7 and even after the attack by Iran. This criticism has been driven by an anti-Israeli perspective based on terrorist propaganda and tainted by anti-Semitism. That perspective lacks the depth of understanding that would come from a rational examination of the facts and the historic context of the conflict. We can only hope that the world will learn to appreciate the difference.